up everybody welcome back today we're going to be doing something fishing related but you wouldn't expect it we're going to be talking about airbrushing and I'm a rookie with this I started this week I'm no artist by any means as long as you give it your time and effort I think it gives anybody the ability to be their own kind of custom painter on their own baits and I picked this up because I wanted to make Tina a custom gift for Christmas she doesn't have any clue what I'm doing I haven't let her come in the laundry room all month so this will be a cool surprise for her and I'm going to put some custom crankbaits that I painted myself inside the box take notes gentlemen so let's get into it airbrushing 101 with a rookie the first thing you're going to need is an air compressor for your airbrush. Any sort of hardware store should have an air compressor. You need one with a moisture trap and a few other little technical things. Go on Amazon, go to the starter airbrushing kit. It's $120, it comes with a lot of things. It comes with paint, the airbrush compressor, three airbrushes, some airbrush cleaner, uh, some cleaning tools. Uh, you gotta get a few things on the side, but for the most part, that kit will have you set. This is the air compressor. And you're going to be shooting paint at about 20 PSI and lower. So this little guy is going to do the job. One thing I've found extremely important when airbrushing, lighting. You want complete all around lighting uh, so that you don't overpaint or underpaint. That's my lighting scheme. So you kind of have to finesse it and do whatever you have to in your workspace. Everybody's workspace is different. The next thing you're going to need though, guys, is what's called helping hands. There are little clamps so that you can hold your lures when you're painting. 10 bucks on Amazon. They're honestly trash. I had to modify a few parts on this, but you need them. So buy them. Then you've got an airbrush holder okay but what I did is I got a few of these brackets screwed them into the wood on the side of my work table I can put it right in there this holder I can put alligator clips can take my blank and I can put it in this clip when it's drying out you can hold more than one bait at a time as well helping hands and an airbrush holder as far as painting goes you're definitely going to need to have a little cleaning station the paint I use is non-toxic so I have this guy it's a jar you just put your airbrush in there get rid of the excess paint I've got this for kind of my general between colors changing you just put a bunch of crumbled newspaper or old magazine in there and it'll catch all your excess paint okay, so since we're on the topic of cleaning let's talk about your options so I use a 4060 Windex to water mix in these little liquid storage bottles you can buy at any craft store then you've got your actual airbrush cleaner you're also gonna need to have like one of these it's just a bottle with a straw and it spits out water pretty quickly and you want that to clean out your gun if it gets real jammed this really helps so also for your cleaning it's important to have a set of brushes they do a really good job of cleaning out the needle the needle tip on the gun having one of these is also essential just a straight brush a bunch of these guys I use them to store paint and I use them to mix paint as well these are three dollars for about 20 of them so as for the actual paint you guys are going to use in the kit that you buy on Amazon it comes with these colors it comes with a set of six colors you can also buy pearl paint or regular multi-surface paint and you can thin it out with an airbrush reducer or water once all of that is said and done and you have your cleaning materials your paint your brush your compressor your helping hands or blanks these are the spro fat papa but um let's get started on this blank it's already pre-buffed so you don't have to sand it down you make sure you have some of these babies let's start you need to tape your bill i'm gonna get it as close to the body as possible so that the paint doesn't run onto the bill you want to check your pressure on the gun we're gonna grab an opaque white you always want to coat your base with opaque white set between posts. there you have it that's your base so that's the first step so after I've got that base white coat I'm going for a shad color on this crankbait so the next color I'll use is a graphite gloss so when you're in between colors you take that Windex mix or the airbrush cleaner and you put a little bit in there and then you use your paper towel to put it at the front to stop the airflow then you bubble it up dump it wipe any of the excess paint out then I do one flush with water then I wipe the residual and spray the rest out now we've got a clean reservoir so we can put that new graphite paint in there well, that's my process for cleaning it between colors and we're just gonna give the whole thing a gray coat All right, so that's the finished product of graphite gray. So I thin that paint down. It's a 79 cent gloss paint from your local hobby store. And now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is apply a gold coat. So far we've coated it with a white base. 
We went over it with a gray base, a graphite colored gray base. I forgot one step. We're gonna have to put a pearlized silver over that gray, and give it a little bit of glitter. After that, there's only a few more steps. A very light metallic gold coating, and then a black stripe and the black shad dot. We're gonna move on to that pearlized gray. <laughs> Pretty much at the last step, I've got the gun full of metallic gold and we're gonna do our last little touch on this shad colored crank. Little bit of a gold accent. So I've just got like a nice gold accent from the belly up to the side. All right, so we're all finished pretty much with the color scheme on the sh natural shad color. I'm not a fish scientist, but I've seen a lot of shad and that's pretty close. Added a little bit of a spin to it and that's the beauty about painting your own crankbaits. Next step, guys, we're gonna make a stripe down the shad's back. You're going to need some painter's tape and we're gonna lay this down and blast a black stripe. All right, so we're gonna go with a traditional black. We're just about finished. I'm gonna pull this tape off very carefully. So here's pretty much the finished product. I've gotta put a black shad dot on the side, which I usually do with a Sharpie, believe it or not, and then I just clear gloss coat it. For the final touch, right above the fin. Make sure you're staying nice and neat. And put it right on the same exact part on the other side. All right, so we're at the last step. I've got what's called Envirotex Light. Two-part epoxy, it's a two bottles set, 20 bucks on Amazon. Pour in the, the, the base component first, just a very small amount in this paint cup. And then we do the hardener. It's equal, so half and half. All you do is mix for like five minutes straight. So once you've got it all mixed up, grab this by hand. You want as much control of this bait as possible when you're painting this on. You're just gonna run that along a light, a light coat. We have us a finished bait, guys. This is a totally finished, coated crankbait, done from scratch. Not bad, I'd say. I've got an egg carton here with alligator clips, and I just clip the baits right there to dry. The finished product will look like this. So this one's completely cured. Absolutely gorgeous, man. Looking forward to making more of these and hopefully putting them up on the Water Warrior website, waterwarriorfishing.com. If you haven't been there yet, go ahead and visit, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.